everybody, and welcome once again to another episode of Techfluencer Talk, keeping technologies simple. And today we have a special guest with us coming directly from his Zoom room, Tony Harris, solution engineer of Zoom Video Communications. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Tony, welcome. And thanks again for taking some time to chat with us here at our podcast and and, uh, you know, I know you got a crazy schedule out there. I am so excited to chit chat with you about okay. Zoom because there is a lot of waves out there right now with Zoom. A lot of talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Tony, give us a little background about yourself first and then we'll dive into uh, Zoom. Yeah, it'd be brief. Not a lot, a lot, a lot about me. I've been in the industry for over two decades. Started off with a little company called Polycom, okay. which is now has been rebranded to Poly, right? That's right. Um, and, and we, for many years, battled with Cisco and other video conferencing companies to be number one in the market, right? Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, that did that, went over to a company that thought they were competitors to Zoom, found out that we, we really weren't. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I came on over to Zoom, been over here about three and a half years, live here with my wife and twins here in uh, Marietta, Georgia, not far oh, from awesome. the uh, airport in Atlanta. So oh, that's cool. Uh, well, listen, welcome to Techfluencer Talk, my friend. So listen, let's dive right in and chit chat okay. a little bit about Zoom. I know yeah. it had crazy growth, right? Especially during the pandemic. I mean, if there's somebody out there that don't understand or know Zoom video conferencing, I don't know where have you been, right? So Tony, give us a little background about Zoom, especially during the pandemic. Well, so the, the great thing about Zoom uh, is that it has always been built for growth and reliability, right? Now, who knew the pandemic was gonna happen, right? And obviously, had we not been built for that growth, had we not been built with that reliability in mind, we wouldn't have survived because we went from 10 million daily users to over 300 million daily users That's overnight. Crazy. So there, there's just no way we would have survived had we not been built from the ground up to sustain that type of usage growth, um, and and wow, and we and we did it with flying colors. I'm still amazed that that, that, that it happened, uh, but it, it happened, and and a lot of it was because not just because businesses needed to still connect for their day to day, right? Not only enterprises, not only ma and pa, right? Companies and shops and restaurants, right? They still needed to stay open to contact their vendors. Many of their vendors were overseas, depending on the type of restaurant. So they had to have some sort of communication to stay, stay involved. And then guess what? A bunch of everyday folks wanted to contact grandma. They wanted to contact their aunts and uncles, right? Everyone wanted to stay connected. They had to stay connected because they couldn't go outside and do it, right? They couldn't travel. Um, and so, yeah, so we brought a lot of people together. What a lot of folks don't know, and I think you'll be interested to know this, we actually gave away over 10,000 school districts worldwide free access to the platform. Oh, that's awesome. So that those school districts would not be interrupted by this pandemic, that their education can still happen to their end users, right? Which was their kids. Yeah. Um, we did that to over 10,000 school districts worldwide for absolutely for free. Fantastic. Uh, which love which it, I love to hear that. Love to hear that, Tony. Yeah. Listen, uh, reality is... Zoom video conferencing, it, you have made it so simple for just like what you said, for any home user, right? That was not, listen, if there's one thing that we all learned besides being resilient through the pandemic right. is the fact that, you know, from one day to the next, we had to make a massive shift in our lifestyle and in our work ethics, right? How we went about the day-to-day -day routines that we once had going into the office. Now all of a sudden we're all home. So whether you were tech savvy or not, Zoom truly made it so simple. They did. You know, it made it simple from just the, the end user, whether home or whether you were an employee, mm -hmm. you know, just for corporations in general to just right. kind of shift into that new norm of working from anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. out of curiosity, what is uh, what's your footprint now, like global footprint for Zoom? Wow. Well, we've got over 19 data centers worldwide. So our footprint is anywhere from India to Asia to Australia to, to California to Canada. I mean, our footprint is global. Right. 
We've got data centers all over the world. We're still growing, right? Because of that oh, yeah. usage continues to grow. So yeah, we're everywhere. There's no, there's, it's probably not many people on earth who've not heard of Zoom because of their personal That's right. or professional usage, right? So we're having to keep up with that demand, create data centers that can handle the load. That's great. Which brings us to the next talking topic as to exactly how Zoom is making waves out in the industry. Now you have Zoom Voice. Now you're a player in the UCAS, the Unified Communications and Collaboration Space. So talk to me a little bit about that. That that opens up another can of worms now in the industry. Well, what most, most don't realize is that video is hard to do. That's right. But to have a good video call, you have to have audio. That's right. You just have to have resilient audio. That's right. You're going to be working in some networks that are good networks and then some that are bad networks, very lossy networks. We actually do well in. We can do well in networks that have the high packet loss and we still do well in those, but you have to have good audio along with the good video. And, and so when most look at our company and say, wow, you guys have only done Zoom phone for two and a half years. Well, as a product, that's correct, right? As a product democratized unit to sell as a separate unit, that is correct. But guess what? We've been doing audio from day one. Right. So the fact that we've perfected audio already in the video platform and in the platform as a whole. That's right. We're kind of no surprise to us that Zoom phone would would take off. And the great thing is because it's a cloud based PBX. That's right. You can now retire that on prem situation where you have to maintain, you have to continue with the software upgrades. And guess what? A lot of a lot of that expertise is going away, right? A lot of that expertise, people are retiring or doing something else. And now you don't have that same expertise to run your PBX on-prem like you used to. So true, yeah. What you do now, right? So now you have to go to a solution that allows someone else to help manage that workload for you. Um, and so it doesn't disrupt your, your workforce. Now, it's funny. It, 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 you bring out such a great point. You guys mastered the video piece, which you're right. It is one of the hardest parts to master, especially if you're streaming, because some people don't have the best bandwidth at home. Right. Mm -hmm. So just to add this layer now of voice, you already had the audio piece. Right. But, but to play in the UCAS space, I mean, we're talking the ability to text, chat, yeah. share yeah. files. Right. Yeah. Still continue with the video conferencing built into that platform. Yeah. I'm assuming that you got fax capabilities. Yeah. So that's huge. Now, take me through the voice portion. Now, is it something like on any device? I mean, I could be on my PC. I have to run out. My, my kids are at soccer practice. Transfer the call onto my mobile device or tablet. Run out. Right? You, you said it. I mean, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. It's easy. Right. Our tagline is it just works. Right. <laughs> right. <Great tagline. laughs> so, 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 hey, I, I'm on a call with you, but guess what? Maybe I have to run. Guess what? I can now transfer to my mobile. Right. Um, and then go out. I could take that call with me wherever I am. Right. And then when I come back to my my desktop, I can then transfer back yep. and the call can continue without without any interruption. Right. So the, the fact that our platform provides connectivity to mobile, desktops, and even the standards-based equipment that we've talked about for video. You can bring all of that into, into one call no matter where you are, right? And so it's just, it's, it's easy, but it's fun to see companies now view that, understand it, and then oh, yeah. implement it for themselves. And then they, it's an aha moment, like this really does just work. And then, you know, listen, and, and the reliability is there. I mean, you just touched upon your global footprint, right? So redundancy and everything is there. I'm assuming what, 5.9 reliability? Yes, absolutely. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. So here's where things get heated up a little bit more. This is where I said, you know, Zoom is just zooming to the top with solutions. Yeah. Because, yeah. And Tony, this is a piece we love to talk about here. Zoom rooms, right? Yeah. So now you have the Zoom video conferencing. You have yeah. the UCAS solution, you have yeah. Zoom voice, and now you have Zoom rooms. Yeah. So 
talk to me a little bit about this. This is just crazy because I, I know in the past in large enterprise, small or medium, but really let's talk about large enterprise, you know, mm -hmm. the integration that took place in those video conferencing rooms. Right. So what about Zoom rooms? Well, I know we have just a few more minutes. I could talk for another two hours about Zoom rooms, but in the interest of time, <laughs> Zoom rooms are easy. I worked at Polycom. So just give you an, an, uh, a day in the life of someone putting together a video system in Polycom. It yeah. could take a while to not only procure the hardware oh, I after you've designed it, put it together, configure it, test it, now maintain it, okay? Now to do that, you had to come in with some cumbersome hardware that took a long time to configure and put together. And you may have to use another application to manage it That's right. and to monitor it. Remember monitoring is important as well. Absolutely is. Now, the great thing is with our Zoom Room solution, by the time you did all of that for one of the standards-based units, you could have done that for five or more Zoom Rooms, right? Now we provide the software but we have our go-to-market partners like Poly, D10, Neat, uh, to actually provide the hardware at the end at the end device, right? But we provide the software and the licenses for that to happen. Um, I, I have personally done created Zoom rooms before lunch, right? I mean, that's just it's just easy. <laughs> and I remember going to crazy. companies when I was at Polycom setting up video units. Trust me, I, I... days. Right. It took days to set those up, test them and, and certify them back in the day. Right. And the glitches and the glitches, right? all the glitches. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the fact that you can now create, put together, test, certify, I don't know, 10 Zoom rooms in the same time you did the one. I mean, that's just it's just crazy. Now, remember, after you put it together, you still have to monitor it. Yes. You still have to maintain that. 5.9 reliability for your end users, right? And so the great thing is with our Zoom rooms is you can monitor them from one portal anywhere they are in the world. So wherever your global footprint takes you as far as your company is concerned, whether it is global or it's just regional, right? You can maintain and monitor those units from your desk, from anywhere, right? As long as you can get to a, your portal, your admin portal, you're fine. So it makes it a lot easier. Your, your ROI becomes easily, easily seen and your total cost of ownership oh, goes down horrible. tremendously. Tremendously. Yeah. Uh, just for our listeners, let me, let me walk you through this process. And this is why I get so excited when we talk about Zoom rooms, because it's video, right? Mm -hmm. Something I'm very passionate about. When you implement, just say a video conferencing solution for a conference room, any company, small, medium, large, you know, sometimes you go to a different application and you have to integrate what's called schedulers outside of room. People like schedulers, right? So that you have to reserve a conference room for that video call, okay? And then you go into the room and you needed some sort of software with a tablet to be able to program everything. There's a couple programs that, you know, Crestron, AMX, whatever it may be, but it's engineering. I'm talking expensive, a lot of programming. I'm no programmer for that kind of stuff. And, and I kind of just understood it on a high level, but I never could get down and dirty with that stuff. And let me tell you, there's a whole integration process. And then Tony touched upon it, the monitoring. That is so key. Now, that whole process took forever sometimes. You know, the parts were missing, installation, cabling, programming. But I just, two components I mentioned with the scheduler. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the tablet in the conference room to be able to just put up a, a, a video conferencing mm -hmm. solution. Now with Zoom rooms, I had asked you this and you told me it's as easy as one, two, three. You actually walk in with a device mm -hmm. and I'm like, listen, Tony, let me go into the conference room. As I'm walking in, right, mm -hmm. the scheduler picks me up, correct? And I walk into the room and I could transfer immediately right. and invite you onto a video conference in a Zoom room. Right, right. You're on your that's, mobile. You're take. You could be talking to me on your mobile as, as we're talking. You could be walking, walking to next to a mobile uh, a Zoom room. Your mobile desk says, "Oh, hey, there's a there's a Zoom room nearby. Do you want to use it?" <laughs> yeah. Well, well, sure. <laughs> if it's available, you go to that Zoom room, touch it. Now, 
your call is on the, the I mean, it's, front of the room. Yeah, you're good. I mean, that's crazy. It's the schedulers. It includes the video conferencing tablets. And again, those are all components. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you said it's as easy as plug and play because of a lot of the partners, right? That you utilize the components that you utilize to finish out the room are pre-programmed, correct? They are our go-to market partners. That's amazing. Meaning every step of the engineering cycle and journey, they are there with us to make sure that their hardware works with our software in a, in a perfect marriage. So when you take it out of the box, the software is already loaded. You don't have to worry about loading it. Yeah. The software is already ready to, for you to use. And that's why I say it's so easy and quick. You plug, you play. Next thing you know, you're where are we going to lunch, right? I mean, that's your that's your next conversation is, right? Where are we going to lunch today, right? Um, <laughs> One of my favorite pastimes, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, but it's easy. It's, yeah. it's it, yeah, it's really easy. You, you don't even have to plan it. You can literally say which room are we going to video enable, whether gotcha. it's a huddle room to um, uh, an executive suite, and just come in and just set it up. Jeez, I, I, I just, I'm just think, I'm laughing out loud here because I'm just thinking of all those audio video projects that we had implemented in the past gazillions of dollars <laughs> and here all of a sudden with zoom rooms and you're on the same network right it's all one network you, you are and the great thing about zoom rooms is there's a couple of freebies we've not talked about you mentioned oh. a little bit of it right yes so the scheduling display license is free for you, unlimited you. usage so so you have one zoom room Let's, so so think of this go with me real quick okay you have one zoom room in your midwest office Pick a spot. I don't care, Chicago, whatever. Okay. But you have offices in both West and East Coast. Mm -hmm. But they don't have Zoom rooms. All they have is lobby digital signage displays. And they also have schedulers outside of their, their rooms that they're going to use for collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that one person who's administering admin, right, is, I don't care, in Hawaii. Could be even totally someone totally different, but as long as they go into their por partner portal or their admin portal, they mm -hmm. can then manage the rooms on the East Coast, manage the rooms on the West Coast, and manage that same Zoom room in the Midwest all from one admin portal. Amazing. And they, and they and they can have the digital signage is going for the East Coast folks. Maybe there's a Boston game or whatever rivalry on the West Coast. The Rams are playing. Who? Man, not the Rams. Let's pick another thing. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> you, you you get what I'm saying, right? Yes, I, absolutely. Have disparate messages going out to everyone. You control it from one spot, and you get those licenses for absolutely free because you got one Zoom. That's crazy. That's crazy because digital signage, once again, that was a whole other beast that you had to implement. Yeah. You had to integrate, and you had to deploy, right? And it's not exactly – I mean – it's not that's complex, but I can't just believe that, you know, with every Zoom room, you have the capability of pushing content yes. throughout an entire corporation yeah. and, and just at the at, at the, your fingertips. Yeah. And, not just, and not just static content. So remember, you, you could have static content that's rolling through or cycling through. Yep. You can put up YouTube videos. You can put up whatever you want that's actually playing on your digital signage it could actually be a commercial from youtube or wherever url that you have loaded that has in information that you have to go to the outside to get it's just it's just easy to set up and very very flexible i mean it's just it's simple it's and did i mention it was free did i mention it was free oh it's free it right? gets bundled in yeah. it's crazy so simple scalable and secure yes very important Yes, yes, yeah. Security is, we think about security in everything we do, anywhere from the bill cycle all the way to production, right? And everything in between, security is top of mind for, for Zoom. So we want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, they feel safe, and then obviously the word secure. We want yeah. to make sure they're secure on our platform uh, at all times. Uh, Tony, it's amazing. So just to kind of recap on everything, uh, you know, for, for with Zoom, right? It, mm -hmm. We all kind of uh, familiarized with ourselves during the pandemic, maybe with the video conferencing platform. Yeah. Now we're talking about Zoom voice, right? And in yeah. the UCAS space, so we're going to take unified communication. We're going to be able to enable collaboration 
in the cloud where you could text, chat, share documents, you know, yeah. still video conference. Yeah. Take that into a conference room and now you throw in Zoom rooms and yeah. you're enabling now the ease of just walking into a, a, a conference room and then just streaming live video conferencing. Yeah. You know, with schedulers outside of the uh, conference room or huddle rooms to be able to kind of tell the people in the lobby that Zoom room number one is taken at the moment, but two, three, and four are available. And, and then oh, you throw in digital signage. Digital signage, yeah, yeah. And oh, by, and oh, by the way, right? <laughs> like I told you, we I could talk about this for another hour, right? Yeah. But oh, by the way, in 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 the not too distant past, even if you had a video conferencing unit in your conference room and you still needed a PSTN type phone, right? A, some sort of, um, at that time, we used to call them sound stations, a conference phone on the desk. That's right. Right. You needed that to, I don't know, order pizza or, <laughs> or just do a PSTN call or whatever. Sure. Right. That's right. The great thing is now is you don't have to do that. Right. You can also have the zoom room, have that same capability. You can use that zoom room, that zoom phone license on that zoom room so now you don't need another so, device right now you've just cut your your devices down to one instead of two. Oh, that's crazy tony so there's a oh, lot there's a, a one-stop shop of, think about that it's one a one-stop shop, shop. Yeah. tony let me let me ask you as we start wrapping up um what what do you recommend for that customer out there whether they're you know in the small medium space or or maybe they're a large enterprise they're they're familiar because they have licensing and zoom conference video conferencing right yeah but what 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 do you recommend to that customer that's on the cusp there of making that decision? You know what what would your recommendation to them be? Yeah, I I think one of the things you they first have to do is what are we using this for? What is our what is our communication strategy? Right. That's right. Not just as what is our communication strategy with our internal stakeholders, right? Because that's easy. We're all on the same network. But what's our what's our communication strategy for connecting to our B two B partners and those who are just outside of our of our campus, right? Outside of our company in Firewall. So, so I would say first assess, you know, what does that strategy look like for both video and audio, right? Yeah. Because the great thing with us is with both video and audio, you can look at different ways of enabling video spaces. Um, as well as looking at the cloud PBX play, right? Because now you can look at, well, maybe we can retire the on-prem PBX at some point, right? We can migrate to that. The great thing is you don't have to do that all at once with us. You can migrate a few users, a few users, a few users, a few users, and then boom. Transition. Can go straight there, you know, that's after wonderful. that. Absolutely. So that's the great thing is with, with, we try to make it easy, right? We try to make happiness a, a big thing when it comes to bringing customers on to we platform. love happiness <laughs> we love it right we love it and so we want to make sure that we we move at the speed of the customer right so we sit down talk with them kind of understand their strategy for communications both video and voice and then just continue to walk them through that journey and just make sure whatever we're doing is congruent to what they want to do at the speed that they want to do it that's awesome tony so how does a customer get started? Yeah, so they would have to talk to their their partner, right? Like a like a Abitronics, right? Go to their partner, um, go to the sponsor of this podcast, obviously, and say, "Hey, we want to start. We're excited. We we get that the ROI is better. We get that our that our total cost of ownership and ease of use is going to be phenomenal. Hey, just reach out to Abitronics and go from there." Awesome. I agree, Tony. Listen, to all our listeners out there and or whether you're watching our video stream, absolutely reach out to Abitronics. One of their cloud consultants will be more than happy to assist you or shoot an email to info at Abitronics.com. And that's A-B-I-T-R-O-N-I-X.com. And make sure, please, to let them know you heard us on Techfluencer Talk podcast. Maybe you'll get a discount. <laughs> Listen, Tony, I want to really thank you for taking time out. I know how crazy busy that schedule you have is. And for all our listeners out there, you might just request a demo and have Tony one-on-one, -on -one, right or wrong. That'd be great. I'll do yeah. it.
<laughs> Tony, thanks again for uh, coming on our podcast, Techfluencer Talk. Want to say thank you to all our listeners. Listen to us, continue to comment, continue to ask questions. And this is Hugo and Tony Harrison. We are checking out.